Amen. Amen. Why don't you just go ahead and just stand to your feet right now. Amen. Amen. How many ready to receive from the Lord on this evening? Amen. How many came today to receive something? Amen. How many of you know that in the midst of all of your adversity, that means God is about to do something, is it not? Amen. Amen. We've been living long enough and we've been doing this long enough till we know that God is just yet awesome. Amen. In all of his, in all of his glorious acts and everything that he does for us, amen, God still finds a way, amen, to come in and move like never before. Amen. How many had a blessed day on today? Amen. Amen. How many, how many was able to see the hand of the Lord move mightily? Amen. Just today, amen, amen, amen. If you ain't got nothing else to thank him for, amen, the simple fact that we are here today, amen, we're able to stand in the presence of the Lord. That gives me a reason to praise him already. Amen, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to have a good time and a high time in the Lord. I'm ready to bless the Lord. Anybody came out to be blessed? Anybody came out to be revived? Amen, this is a revival. This ain't a revival. It ain't no time for us to just go ahead and just be, you know, boring and just lazy. Amen. But we came to praise and bless the Lord because I'm believing that God is going to shake some things up in, our, in my life. Amen. I believe God is going to change some things. I believe God is going to rearrange some stuff. He's going to show me who I am just a little bit more. Amen. I, how about you today? Amen. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and if you would, if you would just bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, God. We praise you. We bless you, God. We glorify you, God. We lift you up, God, and we magnify you on this hour, oh God. God, we know, God, that you know all and that you see all, God. God, we know that everything, God, is revealed by you, God. And God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for allowing us to come here yet again, God. God, we thank you, God, for blessing us, God, with life, health, and strength, oh God. Being able to use the limbs, God, all our fingers, God, and be able to walk in the talk, God. Having being able to breathe, God, nobody walked in here on a machine today, God. So, God, we're thankful for it, God. God, we bless you right now, God, in advance, God, for all that you're doing, God. Everything that you've done, God, and all that you're going to do. Now, God, we pray and ask that you come into this service, God. God, we know that you're already here, God. God, we've already laid the groundwork for you to come in, God. So, God, we pray and ask, God, that you just step in like never before in this place, God. God, we ask that you come in, God, and allow your anointing to overflow, God. God, we pray, God, and we cry out before you, God. Because, God, we need you more now, God, than ever before, God. And, God, in this revival, God, we pray that those things, God, that have been holding us down for so long, God, that they be removed from our lives, oh, God. That they be destroyed, oh, God. God, that they be torn down, oh God. And God, we bless you and we praise you right now, God, for what you're about to do, God. The glory and honor already is yours, God. And all God's people said, amen. 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 And, and for those of you that know it, amen, we just want to go ahead and repeat God's obligation. Amen. And God's obligation says, when my heart is right towards God, he is obligated to orchestrate the situations and the circumstances and the events of my life to bring me in the knowledge of the things I need to know and the people I need to know that are critical to the fulfillment of my purpose and destiny in life. Amen. And all God's people go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise because we know God is about to do something mighty in this place. Amen. I don't know about you today, amen, but the devil been trying and testing me all week long, amen, because he saw the end result of what God is about to do, amen, and instead of me falling down and saying, God, I just give up, I praise the Lord even more, amen. How many of you know that when things get too heavy for you, you got to praise God a little bit more, amen? It, it, it causes something in you to bubble up when you just have to go forth and give God his praise. We're getting ready to call for up on the praise scene. And if you've had anything that tried to hold you down on today, amen, we pray that in this praise and worship service that you let go and let God have his way. Amen. The praise scene. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. 
Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go ahead and step on God. Come on, people. Come on, it's enough of us. The Bible tells me where there's what? Two. I see more than two people. Two or three. I see more than, I got three right here. We got three back there. We got, we got enough. Amen. And then come on and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah, because he is mighty in this place. Hallelujah, he is excellent and he is holy. He is righteous and he is just. And we bless you today, God. We glorify you today, God. We glorify you today, God. This day you are magnified. This day you be glorified. We honor your name, God. We bless your name, God. We exalt your name, God. For you are great and you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you, we bless you. We bless you, we bless you. We honor you, God. We honor you. Hallelujah, anybody come tonight just to honor the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For he is great and he's greatly to be praised. Come on and put your hands together just one more time for me and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah, for the Lord is mighty. Hallelujah, he's mighty. Hallelujah, he is mighty. He is mighty and he is great in all things. Amen. Hallelujah, and we bless him. Come on and put your hands together with us. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You said your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise is high enough to express how great you are. So Lord, you're mighty. Lord your mighty, Lord your mighty, Lord your mighty, you are so, so mighty, Lord your mighty, Lord your mighty, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, oh you said your glory.
He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's great.
want everybody in this place just to close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Think about the words that you're saying. Think about what you're saying. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. A God that does not have to touch us every day, but loves us enough to allow us to be here. How many serve a mighty God in this place? How many know we serve an awesome God? A great and mighty king, amen. We don't just serve a king, we serve the king of kings, amen. Lord of lords, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Angels rise. They bow before the mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Hallelujah, while you're standing, if you go ahead and get your Bibles, amen. Amen. Go ahead and get your Bibles. I'm going to read one of the scriptures, amen, that was given on tonight. Amen. And the book is coming from Leviticus chapter 26, verses 2 through 13. That's Leviticus chapter 26 verses 2 through thir 2 through 13. Amen. For those of you that have it, say I got it. Say uh, if you need a little bit more time, say I'm on my way. It's Leviticus chapter 26 verses 2 through 13. I'll read the first, you'll read the second, amen, and we'll come together on the 13th verse. Amen. And it says, ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall, shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will walk among you and will be your God, and ye shall be and ye shall be my people. Thirteen together. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye shall not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of our and made you go upright. 
May God add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his said word. Amen. Amen. How many is ready for some increase? Amen. How many is in their due season and ready for some rain? Amen. Amen. How many is ready for your crops to be watered? Amen. And your land to flow with vegetation? Amen. Amen. How many is ready to go ahead and just receive from the Lord? Who's ready for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Amen. An outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of times we forget what it is to be revived. Amen. We forget what it is and we feel like, you know what, they say they have a revival. A lot of folks look at it is they just want to spend a lot of time in church. But that ain't the case. Amen. When it's hot, when you're talking about being revived, you're talking about being refreshed. Amen. Brought from a dead state and put back into a lively state. Amen. Amen. Some people, you know, during the revivals and different things like that, they, they don't always get resuscitated. Amen. They don't always get the life brought back in them. Amen. But I promise God that I said I'm going to make sure every time something comes up. Amen. That I'm going to get a refreshing and a renewing. Amen. In my spirit. Amen. I want to feel good, amen. I, I want to be able to be on fire for the Lord even more, amen. That's why they used revivals back in the day, amen, because what happens is there was a drop-off in the church, amen. The, the, the elder people may saw a little bit say, you know what, it looks like we need the fire of God to come back in just a little bit more, amen. So what they did was they gathered the saints together, amen, told them at this particular time and this particular place, we're going to be in there having church, amen. We don't have a program. We just don't allow the Lord to have his way. Amen. And all that come out, you're welcome to come out. Amen. And if you don't come out, you might miss something. Amen. And how many of you know after that, after that, after those two to three weeks, maybe even months at times, folks left from one way and came another way. Amen. There was folks that were sick in their bodies. Amen. That found some kind of way to be healed. Amen. There were folks that was down in the depression and found some kind of way for life to be brought back in them, amen. I'm here to tell you today, whatever you feel like is going on in your life, whether it's sickness, whether it's depression, you know, that, those things should be named among us anyway, amen. But just in case you feel like you're dealing with some of those things, how many of you know that the Lord has opened up a door for you, amen? So go ahead and be refreshed, amen. God has opened up a door for you, amen. See, a lot of times God opens up the doors, we just don't always walk in them, amen. But just do me a favor, just stand to your feet real quick, amen. Amen, y'all say y'all want to be revived, so we're going to have revival in this place, amen. If you got a neighbor, grab your neighbor by the hand, it's okay. You ain't, if you're a man, it's okay to grab the hand of a man. If you're a woman, it's okay to grab the hand of a woman. It ain't about no funny stuff, amen. But all you're doing is just telling your neighbor, say, neighbor, come on and go with me, amen. Because you're about to be revived. God has already opened the door. All you got to do is just walk on in. Now just go ahead and walk in that door, amen. Because there's somebody about to be revived in this place, amen. I don't know about you today, but I came to give God the greatest praise ever. I don't know about you today, but I came to go ahead and give God some praise. And despite what people may say, Despite what people may think and despite what people may do, how many of you know that God is getting ready to shift in this place? God is getting ready to change in this place. You ought to turn around and say, God is already revived me. God is already revived me. Service ain't even really started yet and I already feel refreshed. It ain't even really got started yet and I already feel good out of my Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, that's not how it goes. It says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, there's something down in me. I, I, I think it's called my soul. Since my soul cries out, hallelujah. And I just go ahead and I look crazy because I'm praising him. I'm sliding and I'm crying. And when it don't even matter, it don't even matter. My face and expression don't always look the best. I may not always look the cutest, amen, but when I'm giving God his praise, it don't even matter. Because you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what God has done for me, amen. So that means I'm able to be revived. Y'all said y'all want a revival in this place. So when you want revival, you have to truly understand what revival means. Revival means going from a lowly state, amen. A state of being 
doubt, amen, a state of almost losing your life, amen, but then God finding some kind of way to resuscitate you, amen. He ain't using no, he ain't using no defibrillators, he ain't using no oxygen or nothing. All he's going to do is just touch you and throw the blood on you and say, get on up from there. Just look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, get on up from there. Get on up from there. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, let me sit down in this place. Amen. It ain't, it ain't my time yet. Amen. But I just get so happy thinking about God and all that he's doing. Amen. I know that I, what I had to deal with. Amen. When it came now to this point. But I made up in my mind that I'm going to praise God anyhow. Hallelujah. Y'all go ahead and have a seat. Amen. In this place. Yeah, hey, like, hey man, y'all go ahead and have a seat in this place. It's just, it's, it's just easy to get on fire when you go to talking about God. It's just easy to get on fire when you go to talking about God. Because you can be sitting right, you can be in your own house, amen. You can be in your own house. And the house next door to you to catch on fire. And the house next door to them can catch on fire. And the house on the other side of you can catch on fire. The house across the street from you can catch on fire. And only God can protect you and leave you safe. Amen? Amen. I done seen it happen before. I done seen car, people get in accidents. Cars completely total. And they walked out like nothing happened. Amen. It wasn't because they had good airbags in the car. They, they airbags was God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me go ahead and sit down. Let me go ahead and sit down. It ain't... I don't want to get y'all stirred up too much, amen, because this this duo we have tonight is, amen, it's just going to really just, amen, it really going to blow our minds on tonight, amen. I, I, I'm just excited and I'm believing that God is really about to shift and change a lot of things, amen, amen, because God wants us to be in a certain place to where we know how to praise him no matter how we feel, amen. We shouldn't always have to have a revival to get revived, amen. See, what should happen is that fire of God should already be at with you while you're at your house. Pretty much when you bring it to church, amen, your, your fire is going to hit her fire. And her fire is going to hit y'all fire. And everybody's fire is going to get together and it's going to consume this whole place, amen. Maybe somebody might have missed that, amen. I think somebody may have missed that one, amen. All it takes is a little spark to cause a fire. All it takes is a little spark to cause a fire. And then when you get that spark, sometimes you got to blow on it. Amen. Sometimes you got to blow life into that fire. But once that fire gets started, amen. I mean, you know, just regular water can't always put a fire out. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, let me say that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome everybody, amen, to this revival 2010. The first day of December, amen. This year has already gone by fast, amen. But we thank God for what he's doing anyhow, amen. We thank God for what he's been doing. God is blessing, amen. And the type, the theme for the revival that God gave me was to turn me loose, amen. Turn me loose from those things that have me bound, amen. A lot of people don't know that they're bound, amen. Because they look at certain things, it's, it's, it's not, you know, that ain't got me, you know. I'm, I'm beyond all that, amen. But it ain't until God really shows us what it is that we're dealing with, amen. And then he says, hey, you know what? You're delivered from this, but you still got to work on this, amen. That's why God said that in this revival, amen, whatever it was that's been holding us down, yokes of bondage, amen, depression, sickness, generational curses they're about to be destroyed amen they're going to be destroyed and they're not coming back see a lot of times they get destroyed for a little bit of temporary situation amen they get they get they get torn up for a little bit they get broken in half but a lot of times we don't completely kill it amen because we allow it to come back you know a little something always come back or we don't take enough time to spend with God to keep those things from coming back to hold us down so in this revival God say those things are going to leave and they ain't never coming back. Amen. It's leaving and it ain't never coming back. Amen. There's some people going to be delivered. Some folks is going to be healed. 
God is tired of seeing his people sick. Amen. He's tired of seeing his people sick, dealing with the same thing over and over again. Day after day after day after day. He said they was healing back in the Bible days. We should be healing now. Amen. There's a lot of people that have that gift, but ain't walking in it. Amen. And there's a lot of folks that want to walk in the gift, but just, amen, they ain't got it. Amen. But we just want to praise and bless the Lord on today, amen. So I welcome each of you, every one of our visitors, amen, all our family, hey, those of you that came out to support this. I thank God for you, amen, because the Lord had it designed for you to be here on tonight, amen. I could say come one, come all, all day long, amen, and you still ain't going to come unless you want to come. But God ordained it for you to be here, amen. So I bless the Lord for you, amen. Just tell your neighbor, neighbor, I bless the Lord for you real quick. And 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 for those of you that don't know each other, look like we all family in here. If you want to just, just, just take a couple of minutes, amen, just to greet each other and tell God and tell your neighbor how much you love them and, you know, kiss them or do whatever you got to do with them, amen? Huh? Just wave at them real quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. Y'all don't even want to get up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, today is going to be a great day. Amen. You know, normally uh, we have a program with God. You know, God said he walks with uh, he walks outside the program, amen. Don't always tie the Lord down to a program. I, I, now, I do have one up here. I just didn't give y'all one. Because a lot of folks be listening, looking at the program be like, oh, we have to welcome now. No scripture. Church is almost over with now. We, we want you to just go ahead and enjoy the Lord. Amen. 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 So, this couple that is going to preach tonight, amen. Newlyweds. How long y'all, how long y'all been married? by eight months. Amen. Amen. But they've been friends for, for, for forever, seems like. And I think that's why God has just makes their marriage just that much closer. That they can be spiritually on the same page. Amen. Amen. And, and, when, I, and when I mentioned about the revival, I asked the preacher, I said, hey, I want your wife to preach. He said, no, it's all right. Me and her will preach together. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. He said, we'll preach together. And I believe that is, that's ordained by God. Amen. How many know God ain't going to allow nothing to get up here that ain't gonna be, that don't belong? Amen. Right. So I'm, I'm here to tell you that, you know, they're going to come and they're going to bless us. Elders Angela and Daniel Madison. I don't know what they have in store for us on this evening. Amen. But I know that it's going to be great. Amen. Y'all can come on up. Yeah, we about to get into this. Church ain't going to be long tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Would you go ahead and stand to your rest on your feet while we go before the Lord and pray, amen. Lord God, we thank you. God, we bless you for tonight. God, we thank you for everything that you're doing. God, we thank you for who you are. And God, as we stand before your people on tonight, oh God, allow, oh God, what you have given us, oh God, to lose. God, to heal, deliver, and set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How y'all doing tonight? Amen. Blessed. I honor God. I praise God for this opportunity. Although, just about all of you who know me know this is not a place that I like to be. But, Elder Smith, I got one page. Praise the Lord. And then I'm going to sit down and pass it, pass the mic, amen? But in my meditation, I began to pray and just to talk to the Lord about this revival and what it was that he wanted. The people that would be here on tonight, because we do know that everybody don't come out, but those who would come out, what it was that he wanted me to say and what he wanted to convey. And just in the wee hours of the morning, amen, we were having this conversation, and I was talking about, well, you know, the time. And I talked to the Lord like, you know, I'm talking now. Yeah, sometimes it appears to be crazy, but he responds, so I know I'm, you know, not all the way out there. 
And I began to talk to the Lord about being loosed. That's the title, Turn Me Loose. And I asked the Lord what was wrong with the body of Christ, not just agape and not just us here, but what was wrong with the ecclesia of today. And he answered me with the question that I'm going to ask you. Do you really want to be loose? Do you really want to be set free? And do you really want to be delivered? And I know this is probably why we are going first, because I'm going to just say some stuff to make you think about what is to come. Because oftentimes we have revival after revival. Ooh, I'm revived. Ooh, I'm on fire. Ooh, you know, I'm, I'm set. And that lasts for maybe two or three weeks. And what happens to the fire? And it's not anything negative necessarily to say about the individuals who preach, teach, and or speak. But what are you doing once you leave the altar? Because the scripture does tell us that, you know, we can have a room swept clean, but if we don't replace it with anything positive, guess what's going to happen? That thing that you were delivered from, because yeah, you did receive deliverance, you're going to have greater problems and greater challenges. Go ahead, if you will, and open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. So we want, from this point, just, I want you to ask yourself, because this is a check yourself night for me. All of us have issues. Can't nobody, and we heard here at Agape, we heard on Sundays, all of us got secrets. Do we really want to be delivered? Do we really want to be set free? And I was just thinking, you know, back in childhood, how oftentimes there were things that we did and in an attempt to keep from our parents, we had to keep doing stuff to cover. And in conversating with the Lord, he said, some of, it, some of the situations and some of the things that have us bound is simply because we have not obeyed what he said. Some of us, God has given us strict instructions. Told you, some of it was so plain that a two-year-old can say, that ain't what God said. But yet and still, we go about our own way, doing our own thing. Why? Because I'm grown enough to do it. I ain't got the answer to nobody. Ain't nobody in here my daddy, but God say obey them to have rule over you. And those rulers will be Sunday after Sunday, no matter what ministry you belong to, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday or Tuesday, whatever your Bible study or whatever is, you're getting instruction. Because this is our what? We don't even say it no more. This is my Bible, my basic instructions before what? Leaving earth. Everything that can and would happen, there is an answer in this word right here. But half of us won't even open the word of God to read what the word of God says and can minister to us. Sometimes we don't even have to have a preacher stand before us. All we got to do is daily open this book. Because sometimes if you just, God, give me what you got to say, what it is that you want to do, God will minister to you. All you got to do is open the Bible and read it. But some of us won't even do that in obedience to God. So therefore, we're tied and we're bound. I don't know what to do. God ain't moving. God done told you what to do. He said, that I want you 15. I'm start you off because I know how you are. I want 15 minutes a day in the word. Some of us won't even just be obedient to that simple fact. That can happen on your job while you're riding to work, listening. I mean, there's so many various ways to get God in you. Because we know John 1 and 1 tells us in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. So the more of this that we have in us, guess what? The more we're going to walk up right. And it's, it's not going to be so easy to sin. Those things, you know, I was listening to a pastor and he was talking about... Um, Looking at a movie and it, the curse words were irking him. Some of us can look at stuff and it don't even bother us. In some movies, my husband know I won't watch. He said, ooh, that got too much cursing. You ain't going to want to watch that. We've got desensitized to that. What happened? We ain't got this right here. We, we're not. Because this word tells us to what? Be holy. For I am what? Holy. So some of our, our standard of holiness has diminished. But I guarantee you that we can be delivered. Yes, 
and we can be set free and we can walk rightly because it ain't hard the word tells us that the way of the transgressor is hard if you want to live right you can live right if you want to live holy you can live holy and for the singles if you want to keep yourself unto god i'm a witness i did it for 20 years unto myself God, this you, this covenant is between me and you, and I ain't breaking it for nobody or no thing. And I keep telling y'all, don't let, y'all see, don't let the big size fool you. Because right. right. I ain't never had to bring sexy back. It ain't never left. I can lose a couple of inches, you know what, too. But we can, we choose, we make choices. Because the enemy don't care who you are. He don't care how young or how old. All he want, Elder Kemper told us the other Sunday, all he want is your testimony. The enemy will try you and trip you up and hear you slipping and falling in the same thing, just getting bound even more and more. And so it makes it even more easier to sin, even more convenient. Why? Because don't nobody know. Ain't nobody saying nothing. So I'm going to just come to church again and I'm going to sing and I'm, I'm going to see, you know, if I'm going to see what happened. Everybody can be entertained. Everybody can be enlightened by the spirit of excitement and it not be the true anointing of God. Why? Because God is not going to dwell in an unclean temple at all. So it's up to you if you really want to be loose. Anybody want to be loose? Anybody want to be loose? Anybody want to be delivered? We all got these things that we're battling with, we're struggling with. Why is it a struggle? Just, uh, Lord, here it is. It. Okay, I'm sorry. So we just don't want to have us, don't want to be wrong. We always got to be right. And did I tell you I probably wouldn't hoop? Because, um, you know, I just got to give it to y'all like the Lord gave me. Because sometimes we get so caught up in the schematics of, and you put me in A flat. No, 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 no. Y'all got to live holy. Because if y'all want to see, if y'all want to see Jesus, it ain't got to be, it don't have, don't nobody have to hoop to me. Tell me what the Lord is saying. And the Lord said, if you want to live, if you want to be right, if you want to walk, if you want to do, if you want to excel, if you want to be all that, do what the book say. God said, keep my commandments. Reverence my sanctuary. Some of us come before God any kind of way. Any kind of way, when any kind of thing, doing whatever we want to. God said, reverence my sanctuary. Back in the day, if we was living with Moses and, and all them, the, the temple, we'd be struck dead. Coming before God, thinking we clean. And it ain't just talking about how your physical appearance is. What your dirty heart look like? No, but you're going to come, try to preach to God's people, going to try to teach Sunday school, be over the kids. I don't want nobody teaching a child that I would even consider having if your life ain't right. Why? Because it's the hidden things that you're depositing in somebody's spirit that's bounding our children up. Why? Because you ain't right. You can't even raise your own kids and you're going to try to teach mine how to do something? Not so. Why? Because you ain't spirits the spirits you don't you don't snuck out your kids sleeping you don't snuck out but so they won't see you and here, here we who don't really have a relationship with the lord and, and can't discern and can't hear and see from god and we just let you come on baby we're gonna give you opportunity to minister to the lord's people and you are just killing god's people binding but here today i declare and decree to you that you can be loose and i'm gonna show you by two blind men Let's go to Matthew chapter 9. Now these two men, they decided, they made a decision. And this scripture, bless me, I read this a while ago. And when I was conversating with the Lord, he brought this scripture back to me. And I kind of chuckled about it again. And Matthew chapter 9 says, Pauline, you feel like reading for me. It's just 27 through 29. Start right there. Now that part right there blessed me. Two blind men. How you gonna be blind following Jesus? <laughs> How you can't see nothing? But you got two people come baby, with the same condition, same situation. And we done made up in our mind. Uh-uh. We we got to be free. 
and we done heard that there is a deliverer in the house. So here comes Jesus. Read on, Sister Pauline. Press Paul. They were serious. Decided and determined. Keep going, Sister Pauline. And when he was coming to the house, uh-huh. the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Press Paul. When Jesus came into a house, now he done changed location. Oh, somewhere else. And what the word say? I, I just I'm still baffled by. Two blind men that hooked up and made a decision. Uh-uh. He ain't finna go away. <laughs> no. We dedicate to this thing right here. Where you at? What he doing? <laughs> go go ahead and read Sister Pauline. That's where your deliverance is. If you believe God can deliver you, it's going to be according to your faith. Now, these blind men made up in their mind. And I was trying to figure out, I said, God, how? Okay, how they did that? Because your word don't lie. These were two blind men. Didn't nobody, they, everywhere you went, they appeared. And what happened was the noise that the people made. Because of Jesus and because some of us are so proud that we don't want anybody to know that I've been delivered from pornography or I've been delivered from, you know, what I call sneaking a freak or I've been delivered. Nobody don't want to know that. So here I am with this thing that I want to be delivered from. But I don't know how to get to God. Why? Because it's so private and it's so secretive. It's so personal. That I don't want nobody to know. So here I am in church. Have a wonderful testimony. Of how God delivered. In such a private area. But don't want to tell nobody. That's why a lot of people are still bound. Because some of us won't open our mouth and say. He delivered me. So where's the noise in the church. About God healing. I wish Elder Wesley was here tonight. Because he'll be the one to say. He sure delivered me from pot. I used to smoke every day. Get up popping. None of us want to testify about the nasty things. But that's what God, if he, if you sitting in here saved, God saved you from something. You've been delivered from something. So are we going to testify and make noise about because you might be bound in one area and she might be delivered, vice versa. Give your testimony because the word tells us what? They overcame them by the blood of the lamb. And what? What you saying to deliver somebody? What you saying to set somebody free? It's up to us. You don't have to have a title to be a minister unto God. People read your life anyway. If you name the name of Christ, your co-workers and the people that live in your house will decree and declare your salvation. Does your neighbors know you say? Hello. Ooh. They decided to hook up together we know we got this problem we're not gonna give up until god delivers why because we believe that he can and we know that he will help me get to god help me get to a place where i can walk in true deliverance it's according to your faith some of us are bound. We feel that, oh, no, I can't do anything better. I can't do, you got to. Everybody has the ability and capability to change your life. You don't like your job? Go to school. Two, four years. Change your income. It's called dedication. You can decide and be determined to deliver yourself from your finance. Stop spending so much. You want money in your pocket? Stop spending all the time. Deliver your own self. This is a check yourself miss. And then... Me and my husband was talking tonight before we came to church. It was quite comical, but, you know, preachers are flipping and, t- and make a message out of anything. You got to be careful who you hook up with. Because although we're in a church and we want to, you know, um, help people to, to be delivered and set free, 
we get killed so many times because there may be some situations that may be so strange that we know is in us, but we are taking the right precautions, the right steps to be delivered. And if you got this one friend that will stick with you through your mess while you getting delivered, somebody that ain't going to judge you, but know you trying you working, you working this thing, you working. I ain't all that I'm supposed to be, but I'm not taking a couple of steps back. I'm going forward. They ain't telling your mess. Now, it might stink so bad that it make you want to throw up. But are you going to tell everybody what you learned about this person that you know got the same mess that you dealing with? Are you going to just help them flush the toilet? Spray some fragrance? So won't nobody else know or can smell the residue? Hallelujah. 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 Smell the residue. Jesus. Mm. I got one scripture, Matthew 18 and 18, I believe. We're going to get on out of here. Is that all right? Matthew 18, I'm sorry, not 18, 18, 18, and uh, verse 3. Nope, that's wrong too. I'm sorry. It is 18 and 18. Matthew 18 and 18. And it says, Verily, this is Jesus speaking, it says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall, ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And the, what are we what are we here for today? Tonight. What are we here for? This is a revival, amen. And and we want the Lord to what? See, we came in, some of us, well, some of us came in here bound with some things, some, some, some heavy things, and we came here to be loosed on today, amen? It said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. How many of y'all believe that on today? Amen. How many of y'all believe that on today? Amen. Let me get just one more, uh, let me see where I was. Uh. Verse 7 and, and 18, and this is what I was looking at. The Lord was dealing with me. Say, woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. And cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. And where it says, wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. He's talking about temptation. All of us in here wouldn't have no hands. None of us will be able to lift our hands or anything. And, and, when, it, and when it says... For thee to enter into life, halt, main, rather than having two hands or feet to be cast into everlasting life, we'll all be in wheelchairs. Because you wouldn't have no feet, would you? And so the word we said about turn me loose. And the Lord began to deal with me about turn me loose. Come on, this is a revival. It, it seemed kind of like, like, like y'all, it, it's a little dead. But we, we're about to revive some things because many of us in here are bound. Amen. You see, the enemy is the father of lies. And do you have to exercise your faith in order to be bound? Amen? You have to exercise your faith in order to be bound. And so about three, four days ago, I told my wife, I said, my stomach is just bothering me. It's just bothering me. And she said, you need a laxative. I, I don't. I don't. I don't really like laxatives like that. 
But the Lord began to speak to me. Because what does a laxative do? It loose you. See, some of us in here, we need to be loosed. So the Lord began to tell me that that laxative, some of us in here need a spiritual laxative. You see, some of us in here, we need a spiritual laxative. I know that's funny. I say E flat, but that's where I am. Some of us in here, we need a spiritual laxative, and that spiritual laxative is the Holy Ghost. Because see what the Holy Ghost does, it begins to get down on the inside and begin to clean you out. And some of us in here, we need to be cleaned from the inside. There are a lot of things that we're holding on, that we're hiding, and we're holding on. It's easy. Hallelujah. I'm going to give y'all one quick example. I want my sister, I told, uh, sorry, just come on, walk up. See, things that we deal with, when she was talking about uh, pornography and different things, now I'm not associating her with that. But <laughs> the things that we deal with, pornography, I dealt with that for a long time. See, I can stand here and tell you that because I'm delivered from it. See, a lot of people, we don't like to talk about those things. We don't like to talk about pornography and masturbation, but it's real. And it's in the church. But see, if you really want to be loose, if you really want to be loose from that, you 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 will you you'll let God do what He needs to do. So see, when you sometimes when you when you begin to when you begin to uh, the spirit of lust. So when a woman begins to walk by, and we in church now. See, that's right. That's what we should say. But what do some of us do? We begin. We look. See, that's, that, that's the mistake right there when you begin to look. You see, that's, that, that lets you know that, you, that we need to be loosed. Amen? Just, okay, that's enough. That's good. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but see, God wants to break the chain of lack in here. God said he wants to break the chain of lack. He said he wants to break the chain of poverty. He said he wants to break the chain of perversion. He said he wants to break the chain of adultery. He wants to break the chain of fornication. Break the chain of idolatry. He wants to break the chain of lying. He wants to break the chain of backbiting. He wants to break the chain of witchcraft. He wants to break the chain of manipulation. Because if you want to be set free, you'll run to this altar and say, Lord, whatever it takes for me to be loosed, I don't want to lose my salvation for you. Little, little small sin. It's those little things that will keep us from entering into the kingdom of heaven. It's those small things. And that's why when I took that laxative, things began to come out of me that I didn't know was there. When you take the spiritual laxative of the Holy Ghost, that's when he gets those things out of you that you didn't know was there. Come on and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Come on and stand to your feet. If you really want to be delivered, if you really want to be set free. So we're talking about turn me loose. If you really want to be loose. How many of y'all came in here with some things that you know? Because see, sometimes... As I was telling my father, that's some things that you bound by is a demonic attack. And see, that's 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 something that you, you can't be playing with. Because let me tell you something. He said, Jesus I know, and Peter I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Some of us, see, you got to know who you are in him. Amen. So if you really want to be loose on this evening, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what you're going through because we know that God can do anything. Amen? If you really, and, and let me tell you something, don't, don't come up here and we pray for God to loose you and you go right back and pick it up. Because that's when what she said, seven more come in more wicked than the others. Because we don't want to leave here the same way. We say that, but we really, do you really want to be loose on this evening? If you want to be loose, 
come to the altar. And some of us are simply bound by unforgiveness. There are people that you won't release. Some of our biggest holdups, we won't forget that person that still owe us money. We won't forget that person for what we thought they see, what we thought they meant. We're holding grudges, and we just simply won't be free because some of us have said, I just won't do it. I just, I, I just can't release them. It doesn't free them, it frees you. Unforgiveness is the greatest among the saints. Some of us don't even speak to each other right here in the gospel. Right here. Because there is unforgiveness by something you thought somebody said or you thought somebody meant. But even if, let it go. Let it go. Let them go. So you can be free to do what it is that God called you to do because you're still walking in disobedience. Especially if God told you to do a thing and you won't do it. You want to be used by God to the greatest potential. So free your heart so you can be free to move about in God. Amen. and things that we deal with. But those of you that are here on the altar and truly believe that God will free you, you will leave here loose. You won't leave here bound. The three Hebrew boys in the Bible when it said that the king said he saw them and that I saw three men, I saw four men loose walking, but they came in bound. But y'all gonna leave here loose on today, amen?
you feel now? Do you do you feel like like you've been loose? Do you feel like some chains have been broken off your life? down that means we should give him a praise worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of your hand clap. He's worthy of the foot stop. God is just worthy. to dismiss, but before I do, I have to ask the bishop to come forth and just greet the church. I call him bishop because that's what he is. This, this, this is a powerful man of God. And y'all can look out for him. I'm going to just let him go ahead and greet y'all. Uh, truly God has moved in this place tonight. Um, we're going to let y'all go home, but let me just give you one scripture that I that I just been dealing with all day, if, if you don't mind. In the book of Jeremiah, the twenty ninth chapter and the eleventh verse. And it simply says, see, I understand what you're saying about turn me loose, because I had to look at myself in the mirror. Yeah, uh-huh. And see, for those of you who don't know, there's a reflection in here. And I looked at myself, and I say, um, self, and excuse me if y'all can't see me, but I'm just, you know, looking at myself as I was looking in the mirror this morning, and I said, um, you got to turn me loose, because um, there's some things I got to do. There's some things 
I want to sit behind the drums and be cool and just play and slide on out of there. But um, no, I got some friends that's been praying for me for a long time. Elder Madison, Elder Madison, Elder Reese. And um, the scripture stuck with me all day. And it says, for I know the thoughts that I think, of, think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, not evil, to give you an expected end. So I thought about that for myself. And after I loosed myself, I thought about, wait, this is what God thinks about me? This, this is what God thinks about me. See, we've been friends for 20-some years. We got, you know, friends. I love you like a brother. Ain't nobody going to bother me if I'm around. But then I thought about what the Father thought about me? Hmm. 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 So I, 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 hmm. See, I used to walk around with a big chip on my shoulder. Love to fight. But then it says here, I got thoughts of peace. Hmm. So once I lose myself from all this other stuff that was holding me, I have peace. And you already know I got an expected end. So looking at today's economy, some of us working, some of us not. But we still praising God. But you still know I have an expected end? Okay. I got an expected end. Okay, so I may not be working at the end of 2010. But come January 1, or maybe just next week, I got an expected end. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I got an expected end? Oh, okay. Mm. 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 Okay. Okay. I got an expected end. Okay. Okay. Mm. See, I was stuck right there. I, I couldn't go no further. I just had to sit back and really think to myself. See, Regardless of what you may be going through in life, that still ain't your end. That's not your end? Wow. So I, I, I was stuck right there. So I don't know what's going to happen the rest of this week, but this ain't y'all end. This ain't your end. This is not your end. So I just would like to just encourage you to come back out the rest of this week. Enjoy yourself and bless it be the Lord. Give the bishop a hand. I'm telling you. That's, that's going to be a bishop. That's the bishop. Um, we we want to uh, take up an offering on tonight how many of y'all know that it, it takes it takes money to the Bible says money answers all things amen. amen now you know we're not a church that asks for amounts we don't we don't believe in that but the Lord dealt with me on today and he just told me simply that if everyone whether you have money or not to take the envelope and write on the back turn me loose this is my turn me loose offering not about the amount, it's about your faith and obedience. Amen? The ushers are coming. And following the offering, we have last remarks and benediction from we'll have remarks from Y'all do reason, man. Amen. Amen.
Would you please stand for the final complete confession? And we'll say it in unison. Father, because you've told us in your word, bring our tithes and offerings to your storehouse. We are willfully giving with joy. We are believing in your word for abundance return, even to a hundredfold blessing that will provide us with more seed to continue blessing others. We're expecting a press down, shaking together, spiritual, over, spiritual as well as natural blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, um, certainly thank God. Let's give a hand clap of praise for these this couple, amen. For, for laying the foundation, amen. When if, if nothing else, when we leave here, we should look at ourselves, amen. We should look at ourselves to see what it is that has us bound. And they let us know that we can be turned free from it, amen. Amen. How many feel free? Amen. Anybody feel free? Amen. Anybody feel loose? Amen, amen. You, you know what? I ain't get a chance to come up to the altar, but how many of you know when you going for God, before God, you don't always have to get to the altar. God will deal with you right where you at. Amen? Amen. Anybody believe that? Amen. So I, I tell y'all, I'm loose. I'm free. I ain't bound no more. I'm going I'm to walk into my victory, and I'm looking forward on tomorrow. Amen. I, you know what? I, I made it purposely in my mind, and I didn't tell everybody who was going to preach. Amen. I just said, who was preaching? But I ain't tell them who was going to preach whatever night. Because let's be real. Let's talk. Y'all talk to me for a minute. If, if, if you know a certain person is preaching, you ain't going to always come. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. That that shouldn't be in the house of the Lord, but it happens. Amen. Oh, oh, ooh, they preaching. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sit this one out. Go, go ahead and put a sub in the game. Amen. But how many of you know that those that decided not to come? Amen. Because, you know, I understand we have other obligations. But let's be real. Some folks just ain't come because they just didn't want to. Amen. But you know what? It ain't about them. They lose. They missing out on their blessings. Amen. Because why? God is blessing each and every one of us. Amen. Just for our obedience. Just for our commitment. Amen. Amen. And I'm looking for God to do something even greater on tomorrow. And as the nights go by, I believe God is going to do something even greater. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I look to see everybody's faces in the place on tomorrow. Amen. Pastor, you have. I would allow the head of this house to say something, amen. I thank you for giving me the opportunity, amen, to do this, amen. How I many know, you know, sometimes it's a struggle putting something together, amen, but God knows how to finish it out, amen. God knows how to close it out, amen. So I'm thankful to God, amen, and as the, the, the future bishop got up and said, you know, God is about to give us an expected end, amen. So we have a lot of word to take from this place and to chew on to, to, to the next night, amen. Amen. So without any other things, anybody have anything? Amen. I'll... Yes, ma'am. You know there's a blessing in your pressing, amen. Amen. Even when you don't feel like it, amen. God, God gives you strength, amen. No matter what, to press it on and to make it in, amen. Hey, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, without nothing else, I'm gonna bring back this awesome couple, you know, um, that has given this word, amen. This anointed man and woman of God, and he said, "Well, y'all come on, so you come on too as well, Amen." And they're going to give us the final closing remarks. Once again, I thank everybody for coming out, Amen. And you know what? Hey, if it's only five of us, we thank God anyway, Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Because why? God is blessing, Amen. Yeah, amen. So tell somebody about it. Bring them out, Amen. We start at seven thirty tomorrow on time again, Amen. We believe in that, amen, and we'll hope to see your face on tomorrow, amen. amen. Without any further thing, delays, this awesome man and woman of God, thank you so much, sir, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Well, we all can stand. We certainly thank God. Y'all give Elder Reese a hand. Hallelujah. Because one thing I could say is when yeah. he talked about it and he did it. You know, some of us we don't we don't always do the things that God really has called us to do. And, but he he's an, he's an example, and he's faithful. That's right. Amen. And I'll just tell you this real quick. But the Lord said that everything that's gone out, you're not going to lose anything. But that 
you can't be forgiven. Amen. So the last remark should be from Mrs. Madison. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As y'all know him, he's special. Praise the Lord. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent. Welcome to other. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.